so since we have seen big o theta and big omega notations right so all of them had this word called big in front of them why would somebody name them big if there were no small they would have just called them o theta and omega right so the very fact that they are called big o big omega sorry big o big theta and big omega basically means that there must be something else right so there are two other interesting notations so just like you have big o there is something called as a small o or it's also known as little o in some textbooks and in some papers right so there is no equivalent of theta okay theta is basically onto itself just like you have big omega there is something called as a small omega okay so to so we i'll define what small o or little o is and what small omega is but to get a sense of it so there is no equivalent of there is no equivalent to this there is only theta there is no concept called big theta and small theta there is only one theta right there is only one theta but there is big o and small o there is big omega and small omega okay so let's see and they, they are related to some extent right so let's look at small o right so what's the definition of small o first let's understand the mathematical definition we'll see it from multiple perspectives right so i would say that f of n any function f of n is big o of g of n look at this this is small o or little o so big o so we don't so just just let me write it clearly here so if you write this as this if you write this as this this is big o right this is big o right if i write it as small if i instead of this if i write it as small o right so if i write this as this so this is my small o okay so it's better you have to be careful when you write it okay so f of n is small o of g of n if if and only if so in mathematics as you will see in discrete mathematics iff basically means if and only if okay so these are all shorthand in mathematics all these are symbols and shorthand in mathematics because we use them so often right so f of n is small o of g of n if and only if for all c greater than 0 so this symbol basically means for all this symbol in mathematics means for all right i'll just write it here this is this is to be read as for all there is an other symbol called this okay this is to be read as there exists right so instead of writing if and only if or for all or there exists every time people especially mathematicians use these symbols and since algorithms are inspired from mathematics we continue to use these symbols right okay back to the discussion here so f of n is small o of g of n if and only if for all c greater than 0 there exists there exists n not which is also greater than 0 such that such that right such that your zero is obviously less than equal to f of n but your f of n is strictly less than c into g of n right for all n greater than equal to n zero okay so before we go into it i want to explain how this is different from big o right we have the big o right so this is your big o so there are a couple of differences between big o and small o right in big o we said there should exist some c right in big o definition recall the big o definition in big o definition we said there should exist some c greater than 0 in big o in the case of small o what are we saying for all c greater than 0 this is the biggest difference okay this is the biggest difference between your big o and small o okay if you recall the definition of big o it says f of n is big o of g of n if if and only if there exists some c greater than 0 and some n0 greater than 0 right but here in the case of small o we are saying for all c this must hold for all c greater than 0 this must hold this is the most important differentiating factor between big o and small o right so for example let's take an example right suppose imagine i have uh, 2n right so we know we know that big of big o of n right we know that big o basically gives us sort of like an upper bound like an 
like sort of like an upper bound, right? So 2 of n we know is big O of n, right? But 2n is not small o of n, okay? So big O 2n is not small o of n because you, because this, because this won't hold for all c greater than 0. Look at this. I'll, I'll show you why this is not. Just quickly, I'll show it to you. Okay. So imagine I have this, right? So it, it says that for all c greater than 0. Okay. So if let's say 2n, okay. So I have 2n on, on left hand side and I have c into n on the right hand side, right? Because my g of n here is nothing but n, right? Here, what is my g of n? My g of n is nothing but my n, right? So what should I have? I have c into n should always be greater than look at this this condition should be satisfied right for all n greater than equal to n0 this condition should be satisfied and this should be satisfied for all c for all c greater than 0 now if i take c equals to 1 right if i take c equals to 1 my 2 of n is less than equal to 1 into n this is not true you got, you got the point right so this is very very important differentiation your 2 of n is not less than or equal to 1 into n. And remember here, this is the critical part. For f of n to be small o of g of n, this condition should be satisfied. Right? This condition should be satisfied. This condition should be satisfied for all c greater than 0. In the case of big O of n, we said there should exist some c greater than 0. Okay? So let me write it. Your 2 of n is big O of n, but your 2n is not equal to small o of n. Why is this so? Why is this so? Because in, in the case of big O of n, what do I need to do? Why is it so? Your 2n is less than cn for some c, for some c greater than 0. Right? In the, in, the, in the definition of big O of n for some c. So, if I take, if I take c equals to 3, this would be satisfied. If there exists some c which satisfies this, I am good. But in the case of small o of n, what do I need? My 2n should be less than or equal to c into n for all n. Sorry, for all, sorry, for all c. It should be greater than or equal to, uh, 2n should be less than or equal to cn for all c greater than 0. Now, if I take c equals to 1, this condition won't be satisfied. And hence, 2n is nev not equal to small o of n. But your 2n is small o of n square right your 2n is small o of n square so let's let's understand why let's go back to the definition what does the definition say it says that for all c and for all n greater than or equal to n0 so let, let's work this out right so you have 2n on one side you have c into n square so this condition should be satisfied for all c and for all n greater than equal to n0 okay so you can write either okay so this is what it is right so let's understand this suppose let's assume let's assume so look at this so your n square grows much much faster than n right your n square obviously grows faster than n right so if i divide if i divide both sides by n what happens here i have two on this side i have c into n on the other side right very simple right for it, let's let, for any c i take for example i take c equals to 1 for any c i take okay for any c i take i can find an n0 right look at this so this this condition should be satisfied for all c for all c which is greater than 0 obviously and for all n greater than or equal to n0 suppose if i take c equals to 1 right then i can say that this condition so let's assume c equals to 1 let then 2 is less than or equal to cn, right, for all n greater than 2 or all for all n greater than or equal to 3. Let's write it this way, right. This is true, right. If c equals to 1, 2 is less than or equal to 1 into n, right. For all n greater than or equal to 3, this condition is true, right. Very simple. So, let's take another example, right. 2n less than or equal to, so what I have to prove, 2n less than or equal to c into n square for all c greater than 0 and for all n greater than or equal to n0. Okay. Again, divide both sides by n, 2 into cn. Now, let c be, now let c be equals to, let's say, 
point 0.1 because c can be greater than 0 right it can even be less than 1 also if c equals to point 0.1 what happens now so i need to have i need to have this condition right i need to have this condition that my 2 is less than equal to point 0.1 into n for all n greater than equal to n0 look at this there should exist some n0 there exists some n0 which satisfies this so i've already fixed my c right now let's look at it if my n0 if my n0 is equal to let's say 20 what happens now or let's say my n0 equals to 21 okay, let's just say it's equal to 21 my n0 is 21 which means for all n so my smallest value of n now will be 21 if i replace 21 here what happens this becomes 2.1 right 21 into 0.1 is 2.1 so 2.1 is greater than or equal to 2 so so this condition is satisfied when even when c equals to 0.1 i can show see if even when c equals to 0.1 i can show that 2n right is less than or equal to cn square for all n greater than or equal to 21 which means this is my n0 okay even when c equals to 0 0.1 so for any value of c whatever value of c as long as c is greater than 0 you can find an n naught look at look at definition this is important okay for all values of c there must exist some n0 that is greater than 0 such that this condition is satisfied for all n greater than or equal to n0 right so in a nutshell in a nutshell what we have here in a nutshell what we have here is 2n is big O of n, we can easily show that, but 2 of n is not equal to small o of n, but 2n is equal to small o of n square. Right? So, this, this is very, very important. Similarly, you can easily show that 2n square is not equal to small o of n square. You can easily show this, but 2 of n square you can show is equal to small o of n cube again you can work out the same you can work out a proof very similar to what we have done here right you can prove this and this is but 2 n square is not equal to small o of n square okay so we learn something called order of functions we learn something called order of functions in the next couple of videos which will make all of these relationships much more easy for you understand here we are just defining what small o is Okay, we are just defining what small o or little o is. Okay, we'll understand this much better with many, many examples that we'll see in the next couple of videos. Okay, so that's one. There is an alternative definition. There is an alternative definition. There is an alternative definition of small o. It's a very interesting definition. Much more easy actually, right? So it says f of n is small o of g of n if and only if limit n tends to infinity okay this is from your calculus probably we, we all studied in high school or 11th or 12th grade right this is limits from calculus right f of n by g of n is equal to zero this is an alternative definition this is much more easy if you know calculus if you know calculus which i'm assuming every computer science student knows because this is because we are learning this at undergraduate level this is something that you learned in your 11th and 12th grades, right? In your 11th and 12th classes, you must have learned basics of calculus. Okay. So if you know how to compute limits, which is actually very straightforward, you can show very easily that uh, f of n is equal to small o of g of n if this condition is satisfied. This definition is much more easy than the other definition, right? This definition is more tricky to get your head around. This is much more simpler. For many students, this is much more simpler, right? So you can always use this. Again, I can show that 2 of n is small o of n square. I can easily show this by saying limit n tends to infinity, right? What is f of n? 2n. What is 2n by n square? Limit n tends to infinity 2n by n square would be, would, would, would tend to 0, right? Because this is very similar to, of course, I'm doing some crude approximations here. If I remove n here and n here, right, I'm left with 2 by n, right? Limit n tends to infinity, 2 by n tends to 0. 
right very simple not, nothing very fancy here right so this, this again i'm doing some simple simple hack here, here to get to the zero part right similarly but if you have limit n tends to infinity 2n by n right will be equal to 2 not equal to 0 hence 2 of n is not equal to small of small o of n right because limit n tends to infinity 2n by n is equal to n because these two will cancel out and 2 will remain 2 right so this is a very very simplified definition which is very easy to understand and very easy to absorb right similarly just like look at this look at this just like the way we have for big o the equivalent is small o right similarly for big omega what we have is big omega right for big omega there is an equivalent called small omega very similar formulation i'll explain i'll give you multiple definition of small omega also right so let's write small omega okay small omega in greek alphabet is written as this this is what you write it as small omega okay so let's write the definition right simple definitions the first option first way to define it is f of n f of n is equal to omega of g of n if and only if this is one of the best definitions if and only if g of n is small o of f of n so it says this is very interesting right so we saw earlier look at this we saw the 2 of n is small o of n square we saw this right in the previous in the previous example what this implies is because of this definition it implies that your n square is small o of n small o of 2n or n because small small so not small o small omega because small omega of 2n is name same as small omega of n right because i can ignore constants here right so this is a very very interesting way of defining uh, small omega okay i keep getting confused with this word so this is small omega okay so this is one way of defining it there's a second way of defining it which is like the math way of defining it which is f of n is small o small omega of g of n if and only if for all c greater than 0 there exists n sorry there exists n there exists an n naught okay the definition is right so there exists an n naught such that there exists some n naught of course n naught also greater than 0 such that 0 is less than equal to c into g n right which is less than equal to f n for all n greater than equal to 0 okay this is the second way of defining it if you notice again there's a very important thing between your small omega and capital omega definitions here we are saying for all c greater than zero right in the case of small omega in the case of capital omega we said there exists some c greater than zero okay this is exactly the same difference look at this here we saw that the difference between small o and big o is exactly this part right that for small o we have for all c for big o we said there exists some c similarly in the case of exactly the same way right in the case of small omega we are saying for all c greater than zero okay in the case of big omega we would say there exists c greater than zero okay this is the key difference if you write your mathematical formulation like this this is the key difference between your big omega and small omega and this is exactly the same difference we have between big o small o and big o okay again you can prove all of that you can easily prove that if you have let's say n square by 2 n square by 2 would be your omega of n okay but your n square is not equal to omega of n square or n square by 2 is not equal to omega of uh, or small omega i should say small omega of n square again you can understand these two very easily from this definition look at sorry from this definition what does this definition say f of n is small omega of g of n if and only if g of n is small o of f of n right so we have, we have proved we have proved some simple stuff here right we have proved some very very simple stuff here you can use the same logic to prove that n square by 2 is omega of n 
and n square by 2 is not equal to omega or small omega of n square. Okay, I should read it as small omega. Okay, there is a third definition for this, very interesting definition, the third one. Third one is, okay, so let me write it down fully instead of writing it in short. Third one says, your f of n is omega of g of n, if and only if, again, here we are going to use limits from calculus. Limit n tends to infinity, f of n by g of n is equal to infinity. This is the third way of defining it, right? So this way is very similar to the alternative definition that we saw for small omega, where we are using calculus. The equivalent of this definition would be this definition. Okay, so let, 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 let's see, let's see this, let's, let's see this, okay. Suppose if I have n square by 2 as my f of n, right, and if my g of n, if my g of n is n square, okay, what is limit n tends to infinity, okay, f of n by g of n, the numerator is n square by 2, the denominator is n square. So this is equal to, both of them will cancel out, I'll get half, not infinity, right, very simple. On the other hand, imagine if I have limit n tends to infinity, n square by 2 in the numerator and n in the denominator. So here my g of n, sorry, here my g of n is equal to n. My f of n is the same. So this is equal to, this will tend to infinity, right, as n tends to infinity, because this n and this square would get cancelled out. Here you are saying n, limit n tends to infinity, n by 2 also tends to infinity. Right? So, this is also a very interesting and simple definition, which is very easy to apply. Now, the big question, now the big question that you may have, a very, very confusing question, because when I was learning this, I was thoroughly confused. We have big O, we have theta, we have big omega, we have small o, and we have small omega. There are five notations, right? There are five notations that we have learned till now. How are they related? How are they related to each other? How are they related to each other? That's a big question, right? That, that's one thing. Now, given any, this is, this is one question, right? The second question is, if I have my f of n, g of n, suppose if my f of n is n or n square or log of n, right? Or n cube or 2 power n, right? Or n factorial, right? Or log log n, log of log of n. There are many, many possibilities for your f of n and g of n, right? Now, given that there are so many possible functions out here, how are each of them related? Right? So, th there is this whole concept called order of functions. There is this whole concept called order of functions and relationships between each of these notations. So, we learn these two things in the next couple of videos so that whatever definitions we have learned till now, till now, remember, all we have learned is simple definitions. Okay. So we will learn about the relationship between each of them, the order of functions, and how this whole thing is actually applied in the real world. Right. So it will take it will take a couple of more videos for you to digest this. Till now, what we've done is just definitions. Because without knowing what it is, I will not be able to explain you how it is actually applied in the real world. Right? So just bear with me for a couple of more videos. And this whole thing will become much more crisp and clear. We'll see tons of examples. We'll see lots of, again, after we learn some of this, we'll also solve a lot of problems. We'll solve, we'll solve a lot of problems so that these concepts are ingrained and you understand them much, much more clearly.